What is to me, oh, I thank God for Jesus. Oh, what is to me. What is to me. Let us bow our heads. God, thank you for this day. Please bless everybody that's coming, and please let everybody that's coming here be safe. And thank you for my parents. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. This time, brother Amy. Let's give him a hand. Amen. 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 There we go. Yes, sir. I was looking at this chocolate. I love chocolate. I figured I better eat one of them first, but I'm going to let it go this time. <laughs> <laughs> we thank God for being here and always thanking God for our life, health, and strength. And thanking him for being God Almighty in my life. And I yes. thank him always for his Holy Spirit that lead and guide us me daily. We thank God for all you that have pressed your way out this morning. Yes. Man, because it's a blessing just to be able this morning to open our eyes. And it wasn't us that opened them. God bless us yes, to be able to open. By his grace and his mercy, we are here. Thank God for the leadership of the Church of God in Christ, our great bishop. Arthur General Overseer, our General Superintendent Ella Marvin Jones, his wife and family, Chairman Elbold, Ella Bella, his wife and family, very fine pastor here, Ella Vic, and his wife and family. And always thanking God for my wife and my family. God is good. Yes, yes. Amen. I'm going to sing a portion of this song. I enjoy my little grandson. I ain't thinking anything like that. You're going to be all right, young man. Amen. Let your light shine, shine, shine. Let your light shine, shine, shine. Lord, there may be somebody lost in the valley trying to get on. You ought to let your light shine, shine, shine. You ought to let your light shine, shine. And Lord, there may be somebody lost in the valley trying to get home. Lord, they're trying to get home, home, home. Lord, they're trying to get home, home, home. Lord, there may be somebody lost in the valley trying to get home. church a little light shine, shine, shine. church a little light shine, 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 Lord, there may be somebody lost in the valley trying to get home where they trying to get home, home, home. Home, 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 where may be somebody lost in the valley trying to get home. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I believe there's a hunger in the land. Not for food and water, but for the hearing of the word of God. Yes. Amen. We thank God for the word of God. Well, that's what have us where we are today. We're going to teach a little bit today on how to obtain God's promise. 
Now, the young boy, right, let me take, give me Ephesians, the sixth chapter first, and then we come back to second, Peter. Yes, sir. We'll read this. Ephesians 6 and verse 1. Yeah. Children. Children. Obey your parents in the Lord, for Hold this on is right, right there. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Y'all think y'all can do that? Y'all can speak to me. Amen. Now, what now? Hold on. Here we go. Now, when we had a football game, right. now I come to your football game, right? Not all the time, but I come. Don't we be talking loud? About to lose our voice, don't we? Now, that's what I want you to do now. Can we obey our parents? <laughs> They ain't got no enthusiasm. Let me come on this side. <laughs> can y'all, can we obey our parents? Yes. Hallelujah. See, that, y'all hear that right there. Now, let me come back over here now. Now, can we obey our parents? Yes. Hallelujah. That's all right. Now, keep reading. Amen. Honor thy father and mother. Honor thy father and mother. Never be disrespectful. To your parents. Never. Always honor them. Sometimes we might not understand what is being said, but honor anyhow. Because we had to do that coming up. We had to honor our parents. And when we didn't honor them, we had the consequence that came behind it. The old people didn't play. Oh, y'all don't know nothing about no back end, so we ain't gonna talk about that. <laughs> That's how them old saints were, though. They didn't play with us. Even in the church, we had to be respectful. And I'm that way to this day toward all of our mothers. I have never disrespect the mother, period. If they say, Elder Robin, you ought to do this or do that, Elder Robin tried to find himself doing it. Y'all hear me? Is that Robin, you ought to quit eating this. You ought to get started trying to eat a little bit better. Ella Robin didn't eat much better since he'd been in that Augusta. But see, that I had to obey them. So what I'm telling you, not only obey your parents at home, but in the Lord, the Bible says. Right. They go for your pastor. And see, a lot of people, this go for all of us. A lot of people look at a pastor like that ain't nothing just a man. But the thing about it, he's a man, all right, but those are God's words that he's speaking. And so that's what you're obeying. It ain't you obeying Ella Jeff or Ella Rothman. You're obeying what he read, the word of God. And this how you receive God's promise. See, we got to do something to receive God's promise now. They just ain't coming naturally. We got something to do. We're going to get into that in a minute. Come on with it. Honor thy father and mother. Honor thy father and mother. Which is the first commandment with promise. That the first commandment with promise. That it may be well with thee. That it may be well with thee. And thou mayest live long on the earth. Now when we be disobedient, it's a lot of parents don't believe in spanking. El Robin believed in spanking. See, when the new law came out, my children like y'all, I'd have to stay in jail for a while. But every time I got out of jail, I'd whoop you for making me go to jail. And then one of us would have got tired. And it wouldn't have been me either. Now, wouldn't you rather obey than get a spanking? See, people don't use switches no more. They use belts now, right? Okay. See, we come up with the drop call. Y'all don't know nothing about that either. But that's why a lot of our children is so unruly. Don't have no respect for the elderly peoples. But you see us, these are your parents in the Lord. So we got to be respectful and obey them. Then you definitely got to obey and respect and honor your natural parent. He promised you now, if you don't do that, you want what, preacher? And thou mayest live long on the earth. Now don't you want to live long? Suppose I'd have kept in the direction that I was going in when I was younger. I don't believe I'd be here myself. My day would have been cut short. And so what the Lord doing to you all, he's warning you. 
Now, if you don't do these things, you won't live out all your day. You might think I'm going to get 18. You might not make it. You might think you're going to get 16. You might not make it. Don't you know the young people is what dying? Yeah. We getting older. I just told my pharmacist this week, y'all trying to kill out us old folks going all up high on this medicine and going on. So I just mess around and quit taking it and ain't got to pay you nothing. Yeah. Put my trust in God. Yeah. All work going to leave here. Y'all hear that? Yeah. And I look at it like these bodies that we are in, they are decaying. Yes. And after a while, our medicine ain't going to help us. That's true. That's why we got to put our trust and faith in God. Because medicine ain't what heal us. Medicine ain't what keep us. Right. Jesus said, I'm your keeper. Right. I'm your protector. I'm your sustainer. So that's who we got to depend on. Yes. Now let's go to 2 Peter 1. Yes, sir. 2 Peter 1. Start at 3. And verse 3. According as his divine power. Now this is how we receive God's promises. According to his design, divine power. Have given unto us all things. Yeah. That pertain unto life and godliness. Pertain unto what now? Life and godliness. See, we, a lot of us want a lot of worldly things. But we talking about life and godliness. We need some godly things. Right. And a lot of times, God will give us what we desire if it's in his will. Yes. And a lot of times, we don't pray according to his will. And when we pray, a lot of us ought to be praying, Lord, strengthen every area of my life because this whole body belongs to him. Yes. And so we ought to be praying, Lord, strengthen every area of my life. And if I'm shortcoming in my love, strengthen it. Right. If I'm shortcoming in how to treat people, treat, strengthen it. Because I can't do it alone. None of us can do it alone. Because right. Jesus said in Colossians, it is I to do the work in you and not ye yourself. And so since we know he'll do that work, you know, and the good thing about it, he said, the work that I have started in you, I'm going to finish it. And so we got to have faith in what the word of God said. If he said he's going to start a work in us after we turn our life over to him, he's going to finish it. We might not can see how he finished. He's going to finish it, though, and I believe that. And when I leave here, I believe I'll be exactly where he want me to be. Not where men and women want me to be. I'll be where he want me to be. Yes. Y'all hear me? He didn't tell me <laughs> to be like my friend, mother boy. See, we were stayed lemon. We we the way you <laughs> He didn't tell none of us to be like one another. We gotta be like Christ. Y'all hear me? Yeah. We gotta be like Christ. Cause if we try to be like one another, if one slip, then we slipping. But if we be like Christ and follow the scripture, we're going to be like him. Yes. What it said. According as his divine power has given us all things that pertain in the life and godliness. Through yes. the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. <laughs> he called us. How many read the Bible? This is young, old. How many of y'all read the Bible every day? I sure don't see many hands. How are you going to become more spiritual if you're not picking up your Bible? Yes. Jesus said, these words that I speak unto you, they're spirit and they're alive. Yes. We just can't wait till we come to church on Sunday and on Bible class on Monday and Wednesday night. We got to pick up that Bible every day. And I'm not saying read a whole chapter, but you need to read some verses. And whatever God revealed in your heart and in your mind, sometimes do like Ella Robinson, jot it down. And then when you go through the day, you read that, what you done jot down. Why is I'm doing this, Lord? Because now it's getting in my heart. It's getting in my mind. You want a mind like Christ? It's important to read the word of God. <laughs> Let me calm down with this. Some Bible class, we ain't going to preach. What it is? Do I need your eyes, sister? Don't no, sure. Okay. What it said? Verse four. Verse four. Whereby given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. Y'all hear that? He given unto us exceedingly great and precious promise. I stand on here promise. Y'all hear me? 
When this body started getting fever and pain started racking, I prayed to him. That's a promise. You promised me. You ain't going to let no evil befall me. Huh? He'll heal this body. And he touched it. And evidently, he done touched a whole heap of our bodies. Yes. And that's why we ought to always give him the praise. And you ain't got to be in the church house to give God no praise. You can be sitting in your living room and just holler hallelujah. Yes. You can be driving your automobile to hold on to that third wheel, though, and just a hallelujah. Yes. <laughs> See, a lot of people think they got to be church. It's a difference between praising God and worshiping God. Hallelujah. We worship God when we're singing, clapping our hands. Uh, but when we praise God, we're giving him honor for what he has done in our lives. <laughs> what it say? That by these you might be partakers of the divine nature. Y'all hear that? How many want to be partakers of the divine nature? Yes. Now everybody ought to be raising their hand now. Yes. Hallelujah. That's right. I want to be partaking of that divine nation. So he made a promise to me in 1 John. You ain't got to go there. Third chapter, I believe it is. Beloved, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we shall be called the sons of God. It does not yet appear what we shall be like, but when he shall appear, we shall be like him. That's why we ain't trying to be like one another. We shall be like him. Yes. That, that divine nature that I want in me, when that trumpet sound, that I can be chained in the moment of a twinkling of an eye. You're never too young, young people, to get God's spirit. You ain't got to act like Ella Robinson. Wait till you were 23. Don't do it. Because the Bible tells me, that this promise is unto you and to your children. So this Holy Ghost that Elder Robinson has, it's to you right now. All you got to do is obey the word of God. That's all you got to do. And obey your parents. God will give it to you. And don't worry about skipping and shouting like me either. Elder Robinson skipping and shout what God have done for him. Healing of cancer. <laughs> This year, 15 year free. I got something to shout about. Yes. Put new discs in my neck. Titanium plate and six screws. So I went and walked for a whole year. Six months later, I was at L.A. Church shouting and preaching the word of God. God. That's what I praise God for. Yes. So you, if God done done something for you, we got a right to praise God. Right. The church done been quiet too long. Yes. It's time to praise God. Yes. It's time to give him the honor that he is due. Yes. Glory, now I gotta come. Yes, sir. I gotta calm down again. <laughs> glory, glory, glory. What is that? That that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature. Yes. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Are you still lusting after the things of the world? If you are, you can't get in God's kingdom. Even in Revelation, Jesus, God sent John back from the outer parliament to warn the church. Come out of her, my people. Don't be partakers of her sins. Ain't no saint have no been to looking like the world. We're holy people. We members of the royal priesthood. Yes. We've been set aside for the purpose of the use of God. Right. Not the use of the world, the use of God. Right. What it say? And besides this, and beside this, giving all diligence, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue. Now hear how we get his promise. He's telling us what to add. He want us to add some virtue. What? And to virtue, uh, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge. Add to your faith virtue. Right. See, the first thing, we got to have some faith now. Yes. If we don't have no faith, we can't please God. Because we don't believe. How you can have faith if you don't believe? Mm -hmm. They work together. So all of us got to have faith. 
And that's why I tell the people a lot of times, reason we don't receive the blessing that we desire from God, we pray to him all right, and then the thing don't happen within two or three days or a couple of weeks, then we put it back in our own hand and we try to solve it ourselves. Where did that doubt come from? You say you have faith, now you tell me, where did the doubt come in at? Come in at. Yeah. Yes, you can't have faith and doubt at the same time. Amen. If you're going to give God something, put it in his hand, put it there, and leave it there. And don't worry about it. That's my testimony. Don't y'all know, in 06, when they told me I had cancer between my kidneys and liver, yes, Satan brought fear in my heart and in my mind, but I wouldn't let him win. I let him know he alive. And on that Wednesday night, Bishop Lawson was in the pulpit. I asked him to pray for me. He said, you're going to be all right. I didn't move, though. I stood right there. He started talking to another elder. He turned around, he said, you still standing there? I said, you didn't pray. <laughs> he pat me on the shoulder, I told you, you're going to be all right. Go take the operation. My faith was in what he said. I said, you say I'm going to be all right? I'm going to be all right. I went and took the operation. Fifteen years later, I'm still here. Thank God. And that's how we have to have faith in our leaders. If you ain't got faith in your leader when you have to prepare, go to the one that you got your faith in to see where God works. Yes. I tell them you ain't got faith in that Robin, don't ask for prayer now. Pray yourself. Because you ain't got faith in me, how are you going to believe? We want to receive the promise of God. We want healing. Some ain't never felt no pain yet, but keep growing. Keep getting older. That Robin's 70 years old and got a huge yard. And I went out there and cut it with a push lawnmower the other day. I had to get somewhere and sat down when I finished. Lower back, <laughs> hips. <laughs> I told my wife, I ain't 50 no more and I ain't 30. I guess I'm going to 70. And see, one day y'all going to get up in the age. And y'all going to, you need God help now though, really. Because so much going on in these schools. And they're teaching all kinds of stuff to contrary to God's word. And so what, that's the importance of you all obeying the word of God and getting it in your heart and in your mind. So when they start teaching these things about these men with men and all this funny stuff, you know within yourself that ain't right. Right. And I know they're the school teachers. But if they're teaching something contrary to the God's word, don't go along with it. Right. Peter said, better to obey God than obey man. Yes. That goes for all of us. Husband and wife too. If a husband saying something contrary to God, you ain't got to obey that. You most certainly don't. Because when you disobey God, the Bible says sin separates you from God. Now, why would you want to separate yourself to obey a man, obey a woman? How are you going to receive your promise? Right. What did it say? And to virtue knowledge. Then I want you to get, where did knowledge come from? Y'all can talk to me now. Where did knowledge come from? I, now, y'all ain't like these kids. Y'all ain't got more clue better than that. Now, where did knowledge come from? And that's why it's important to come to hear the preacher. That you can get that knowledge. And I know, and, I, and they know I preach teach on it in Augusta. We have to be very careful of the technology. Because this technology got you sitting at home and want to look at Ella Robin and Ella on your television, or on your phone. But one thing we all got to remember, a commandment that God gave every last one of us and we should be obeying it. Not to forsake and assemble yourself together as a matter of some ill. The Lord already know that many were going to fall away. He already knew that. And that's what COVID did. It separated the church and the members. 
Many lost faith. Been close to four years now, and many still haven't came back to church. Yet they say they're strong, yet they say they're saved. Where you get your strength from? Yeah. Strength come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. <laughs> what it said? And to knowledge, temperance. Then we got to have some temperance. Some people so easy to just fly off. But you say you say. Somebody talking calm to you, and you go to raising your voice up. We're supposed to have temperance toward one another now. Don't y'all know, out of all of us in here right now, we ain't going to agree on everything. No. My pastor Isaiah taught me to learn how to agree and disagree in love. Yes. If you don't agree with me, thank God. You keep believing what you believe, I'm going to keep believing what I believe. So it ain't nothing to argue and get all upset about. Start sweating. <laughs> Blood pressure go up. Now you need something to calm yourself down. But if you follow the scripture, you'll be all right. What it say? And to temperance, patience. Then we need some patience with one another. Everybody's not at the same level. And some people think, as they grow a little bit, they know more than the pastor. How you gonna know more than the pastor? Jake, all your knowledge increases. You must think mine done froze up. It ain't in the freezer. <laughs> My knowledge is increasing too. Yeah. Because the Bible tells me the growing grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yeah. So the longest every last one of us is in this earth, we're gonna be growing. Ain't no one better than the other. If you're saved, you're just saved. Yes. Hallelujah. Now I got to calm down again. <laughs> and to patience, godliness. Now I want you to live a godly life. Yeah. Y'all hear me, young folk? Just call your schoolmate. Paint their lip. Don't paint yours. You see how beautiful you is? Y'all beautiful like y'all. When God created you, he said, that's good. Now, why you want to add to something that's good? What can you add to that's good? <laughs> that's a lot of temptations in your school. Somebody asked you why you wear dressed all the time. You ever been asked that? See? Do you have an answer for them? What you tell them? Lord, have mercy. I say it's part of the standard. It's part of the holy standard? Hallelujah. Y'all all give a hand. <laughs> that young and ain't afraid to speak up. When I was coming to school, they was in the church, right here in the wooden church with us. They get to school, they pull the skirts up, and roll it up and tighten it. Now they got a mini skirt on. And Bishop Luca didn't cut no slack on us either. He kept telling us, don't follow the word. He be, he be up there though. Pull them dresses back down. Just like you're supposed to be dressing. There's a hole in this church. Y'all hear me? Yes, sir, we hear you, Bishop. And some pull off the dress and put on a pair of pants. And then put the dress back on for to get home. No, they don't wear pants all day long. Your parents didn't see you, but God see you. And he's going to judge you for it. Holiness is a standard. When I come along, the standard was real high. But every generation done called it the Lord a little bit. But I'm here to tell you today, you got to go back up. Amen. We cannot serve God like we want to. We cannot do like we want to yeah. and how we feel. Right. God done already laid the foundation for the church. Right. And we cannot add what we want to add to that foundation. Right. 
We got to be holy. Yes. Righteous right down here in this present world. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Yes, glory, Lord. glory, glory. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. Are we kind to one another? Huh? I know some sisters. I ain't called no name. Used to have a sharp tongue. They said what was on their mind, whether they hurt you or not. But I have seen a change. Not just now. I've been, I have seen the change. I've seen where they let God begin to work in their life. That's why I said we all did not at the same level. Just because someone have a sharp tongue now, give them a time. Yeah. Don't kill them, give them some time. Let the word work. Yeah. Not us, let the word work. Because yeah. God said, I'm the only one that can take out that stain of heart, that stony heart, and give you a heart anew. He'll do just that. We can't change our hearts. God does it. Yes. People want you to change real quick. It ain't like that. When I got, I got baptized at the age of five, outside, by that door, I seen all this water flashing up out the pool from the ground. I won't get in it. And I got in it. But I didn't understand holiness. I didn't understand what I was doing. I just got in because I wanted to get in the water. At age 16, I thought I was grown. Y'all hear me well, young folks, so don't do like El Robson. I thought I was grown, thought doing things I knew I shouldn't have been doing. Not only did I leave the church, I got put out the house. Because my father said, but one king in this home, and that's me. You got to go. That's the importance of obeying your parents. Don't get put out. And then when he put me out, he said, don't you slam my door because you might have to come back in it. I didn't slam it either. <laughs> but when I come back, I had a wife at that time, maybe four children. I wasn't treating her right. Bishop kept preaching, husband, love your wife. Quit being bitter against your wife. I'll be looking at him. When church out, I go right to him. Bishop, now you told me to come to church. Now you're preaching on me. And his answer was, I hit you today. I said, you know you did. He said, hoo hoo, come on back. And Ella Robinson kept coming. Now we've been married for 50 years. Stand up, Mother Robinson. Wonderful. Let them see who you are. For eight long years, she had to suffer with me. I never heard her raise the voice. I never heard of you for family. I could go off and stay for two or three months and come back home. And she said, do you want me to make you some bad water? Do you want something to eat? That was pretty. And she wasn't even in church showing love like that. That's why he kept preaching on me like he did. And he changed me too. Some of the sisters where I am now, they say, you wouldn't have made it with me. I, I probably wouldn't have. <laughs> I tell them, now how come we ain't married? <laughs> God gave me something that was able to go through the old testers with me. So what I'm saying now to the husband and wife, A marriage ain't going to never be like you want it. Marriage is something that is made through your suffering and through your child. And but when you go through these suffering and child, you got to learn to go through with love. Y'all yes. hear me? Yes. And hubby, you can't be bitter against your wives. You know they need something. And you keep looking over it. You got to answer to God. And it's show coming up again. Yes. Hmm. Yeah, well, now I don't have to worry about nothing. 
And I don't walk around the house all the time talking about I love you, honey. I didn't come up like that. I don't buy no flour, no chocolate candy. Don't need none, no honey. <laughs> but when Elder Robin don't need general assembly, if I go shopping, before I buy myself something, I said, honey, go pick you out a couple of suits. She get her a couple of suits and some shoes. That's my love. When I cook dinner that some of y'all look at on Facebook, that's my love. She don't have to tell me to clean the house. I know her condition. I clean it. I wash clothes. I clean the house. Why are you doing that? Because when I was down for nine months, she took care of me in the night. So now it's my time. So what I'm saying, homie, there'll come a time where you got to take care of your wife. Now let me get back to my lesson. <laughs> what it say? And to brotherly kindness, charity. Charity. How many of you walk around with your hand like this? And seeing your brothers and sisters in need. Huh? I tell them down in the country, you see a sister walking on the side of her feet like that, called the shoe on wore out, and you got about 50 pairs in the closet. A pair go to each dress and suit you got. Give them a pair of shoes if they can fit them. Matter of fact, give them a suit to go with the shoes because you ain't going to need it. You done gave the shoes away. <laughs> but that's charity. Showing charity and love. Love is an action word. You can't keep telling me you love me and you don't never do nothing for me. We supposed to be helpful one of another. Ain't that what the Bible said? Amen. Y'all hear that, young folk? Help one another. Help your brothers and sisters. I teach my grandkids that. They cash up Elder Robin and say, Papa, can you send me 20? Papa, can you send me 10? Then right back there, say, Papa, send me $75. I sent five dollars. <laughs> Man, what you gonna do with seventy five dollars? I gotta see you first. Wait till I come to the house and talk with you. But what I do though, when I help them, when they in this and here, and all of them, I say now the same love that I'm showing you, show to one another. And then I tell them, boy, since you asked, I'm going to give it to you. But I want your father to bring you to the house and help me rake these leaves up. <laughs> I t say, stand up, honey. I tell this and him, stand up. And this and him, come and wash the brine and dust the dust off of me and pop all house. Go clean the tubs and things. I put them to work. Why you do that, Pastor? Because I don't want them to think you got to give them something all the time. Yeah. I'm teaching them responsibility right. that many parents ain't teaching their children. Right. Y'all sit down. <laughs> don't work so much that you can't take time and show compassion and love to your children. Right. Yeah. Don't shoo them off all the time and put them on game. Take the games anyway. Right. Right. They don't need all that technology at a young age. Googling everything. Nine years old, know where children come from. That's too much knowledge at a young age. And that's why a lot of them, not just these young folks, teenagers too, follow in the world. Because they're Googling a lot of things. Some of them trying to live above where they are at. Parents in the bed sleep. They're up under the cover. One o'clock in the morning, Googling. I keep telling you, don't let technology call you to go to hell and your children too. Right. <laughs> and I know I got it right. And I keep telling you, holiness is a standard. We can't do what the world do. All this technology actually is of the world. Yeah. Yes, we can do some good things with it, but when we see it and it causes our own members and things to slow down and slow down on God, it's time to do something. Right. Right. 
Get back to the house of God. Well, you can get some fire in your bones. Yeah. Show up with Ella Robinson and Mother Lemma. <laughs> what you talking about? Don't you know your candle going out when you don't come to church? Your candle getting dim. And that's what happened to those five fully virgins. They didn't have enough oil in their lamps. And I know about lamps. I come up in the country. When the power would go out, my mother said, y'all like the lamb. And I wanted them small ones. I, I turned the wick up real high and light it. But then the whole globe go black. Y'all know what she did? You know been there. Clean that globe. Then you had to let it down. And what I'm saying, some people, they let the wick up real high. They run for a long time. But after a while, that wick burn down to the base of the globe. And then the fire go out. Somebody fire have went out. Yeah. That's why Jesus said, when I return, will I find faith in the earth? That's what he said. Hallelujah. Sound doctrine. Yeah. Y'all don't believe in skipping over nothing. I don't teach and preach where people can love me. I teach and preach because the Lord told me to cry loud and spare not. Oh, yeah. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Yeah. Show my people their sin. If you ain't never somebody don't show you sin, how you gonna get out? That's true. All right, back to the lesson. The time come in. A verse. Yeah. For if these things be in you. But if these things be in you. And abound. And they stay. They make you. They make you. That ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Don't y'all want to bear that fruit? Yeah. yeah. I'm, that fruit is a serious matter. I believe a lot of people don't look at holding it as a serious thing. But this is a serious matter. Y'all remember what Jesus did to the tree that wasn't bringing forth fruit? He cursed it. And then John, St. John, he's telling us to the church, <clears throat> if we don't bring forth fruit and don't remain in the vein, he come and cut us down. And then he said, men gather us up to be burned. Y'all know that hell, right? Yes, All right. Some people don't believe in hell. It's a real hell. And it's enlarged and dated for all those that don't want to believe. That's true. I decide to shun it. <laughs> it's too hot. How you know? I was burnt with a radiator in 84, leaving the General Assembly, right at Peace Street Industrial on 285. My station wagon ran hot. And all I did or raise the hood. And when I raised the hood, the cap blew off and hit me in the middle of the face, broke my glasses, and all that antifreeze and hot liquid took the hair immediately off of half of my head and skin off of half of my face, neck, and shoulder. I don't never want to be that hot no more. They had to put me to sleep just for me to stop hollering. And I'm a grown man hollering like that. But thank God for Bishop Luca. The doctor didn't know whether my pig meat was going to grow back or not. I thought I was going to have to walk around like in dog skin. <laughs> but Bishop came and laid his hand on me. None of me was all to say, you're going to be all right. This ear was just big. They thought they were going to have to operate and take cottages out of it. But after Bishop prayed, glory, my pig meat began to grow back. The doctor didn't even understand. Look at me now. Yeah. God is a good God. Yeah. All we got to do is serve him. All we got to do is obey him. He going to do what he said he going to do. We got to do what he asked us to do. You want his blessing? Obey him. Y'all hear me? Obey him. You take a test. How long do you study? How many days? Two days before. You put some time into it, don't you? 
do the scripture like that. How long it take you to study? Right before? <laughs> this, now, this is my granddaughter, so I can thump her. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't y'all wait a day before now. Because some people doing that now, they think because they're young, they got a lot of time. Then that trumpet sign is too late. You, you, it, it's too late. And when the heart stop beating, it's too late. So the same way y'all study for testing, read God's Bible. Spend at least five minutes in the Word. Quit Googling. Lay the game down and read the Word of God. And the parents ought to be the one initiating that. But I already know, because I done been around it a lot. When two parents are working, a lot of times when they come home, they're tired. Instead of thinking and giving the church some compassion and love, they tell them, get on, don't you see I'm tired? I just got home from work. You don't have time with them really to tell them sad at this end. Then you got to go buy some groceries. Cooking. Where that time at? Married women, to all of you. All your time does not belong to the husband. You got to give some time to the children. And the husband ought to be the main one giving time to these children. Because that's who God put the responsibility on raising the children. And the woman just supposed to follow his example. Let me get back to my lesson. Yes. yes. I don't know why God keeps leading me in that direction. <laughs> Give me Hebrew 10, 23, and then verse 35 and 37. Yes, sir. Now, I don't want nobody to eat children. He done raised eight of them. And all of them not in the church. They were raised in the church. And here's something else to the parents. My mother told us she died that Sunday in the car accident we had going to garage, Georgia. That Saturday, she set us all around the table in the kitchen. She said, all of you back in the church, but all of you will not be saved. And before of us remaining. I know we want all our children to be saved, but when they become 18, according to the law here in America, they are an adults. Now all you can do is give them your opinion and your suggestion. And they have the right to not accept it. They wrong. So my mother taught me, raise your children from the age of five till they get 12. <laughs> I ain't going to use the word beat the foolishness out of them, but she told me to get it out of them. I put it that way. Because <laughs> a lot of stuff they do is just foolishness. And even God said beat it out of them. But here's what done happen. The government... Cause all a child got to do is go to the school and show the counselor the, the whip you done left on them. And then here come them folks knocking on your door. And you ain't careful you're going to jail too. That's true. But the point is, Jesus said, some of us going to go before Madison. Y'all hear me? Some of us going to be incarcerated. We are. But Peter said it's better to obey God than man. Because he said if you beat them, they ain't going to die. They surely shall not die. He that spoiled that a rod, he spoiled his child. There again, that's why some of them ain't got no respect. Huh? Tell them to do something. What you said? My children ain't never talked to me like that. Ain't now never told me how, huh, what, that didn't happen in my house. And I wasn't whooping them all the time. Now, they had to do something sure enough serious for me to get a hold to them. 
We just raised them that way. So when they start saying these different words, parents, you're the one got to correct them. And you can't correct them one time. You got to do like preacher do what? We, that's why we have to keep preaching the same thing over and over and over. Why? It got to get in our heart and in our minds. What it say? Amen. Hebrew 10 and verse 23. Yeah. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. Y'all hear that? Hold fast to it. Let me take my glasses off where y'all can see my eyes. Read that again. Hebrew 10, 23. Yes. Yeah. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For a he lot is of people faithful that promise. Today. Today. They have started listening to other preachers, other organizations. Now they're trying to question what we've been teaching all these years. What done happened? I got a reader, you're following the reader, you ought to be anyhow. We tell you, open your Bible. And if we got the truth, what are you looking for, saints? Y'all can answer me now. What are we looking for? The Bible says we are not of those that run to and fro, taking in every wind of doctrine. We're supposed to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of Christ. That our labor won't be in vain. Talking about the labor this day is going to be in vain. Yes. You're going to be done running 10 or 20 years, and when you come up in form, depart from me, your work of iniquity. I don't know you. Take your salvation seriously. Yes. Too late in the evening to pick flowers. It's time for all saints. Set your hearts. Because that's what you're going to judge. It ain't about these suits. It ain't about the old pretty hats, mother sisters. God said, when I come, I'm judging the heart. The thought, even the imagination of your heart. Even those sacred things, I'm going to proclaim them on the rooftop. Ain't nothing going to be here. Such your hearts. Yes. Make sure you don't have no envy in it. Make sure you don't have no strife in it. Make sure you don't have no jealousy in it. Yes. We shouldn't be jealous of one another no way. Because right. we all serve in that same God and ain't but one. Right. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Yes. And we all got to serve that same God. Yes. So I don't care where you run, you still got to serve God. Yes. Let me calm down again. <laughs> what is that? 24 verse. And yeah. let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Y'all hear that? Provoke unto love and good work. Don't be telling these young folks you ain't going to be nothing. That ain't love and good work. I know you ought to be doing better than what you're doing. How you going to put that? <laughs> that ain't love. When I was in the world, that's how people talked to me. Church folk. I call them like, I call them like Bishop Luke used to say, those church folk. They ain't say, yes, they wouldn't be talking to you like that. Amen. And I made myself a promise when I got in the church. I never talk to people and treat them the way I was when I was in the street. I never, and I don't do that. I show love. I show compassion. I see people standing out with cardboard. <laughs> I don't know whether they need help or not. I stop my car. I reach in my pocket, if it's a dollar, two dollars, five dollars, I get it to them. Because what they do with it, then it, I done gave it away so it ain't mine no more. So now between them and God. We got to get rid of that world mentality, people. You can work like me. You got a cell phone, brand new cell phone, and need some money. You don't know how you got it. That's true. When I was on the street, on Harry, I had for 50 cents and get cussed out. Some want to fight. And now here's Chapo doing the same thing and have that same mentality in not of God. Yes. 
God told us to show love. God said, if a man asked to be given, if you have to borrow, lend, and don't look for nothing in return. If you know you can't lend $500, don't lend it. Give him what you can. Ain't that how our father did us? Uh, when I was in the world, I said, Daddy, can you help me with my house? No. He said, how much of you got? I tell him. He said, go get a little more. Get half of it at least. And then come back. How not already do. <laughs> Trying to get me put out. And we used to get, then we used to get highly upset. But what he was teaching us was responsibility. Yes, yes. I'm not just going to give you because you asked. So I have to go hustle. <laughs> and get my hair and go back to him. And then he gave it to me. And then I pay my note. He had to help us a lot when we were in the world. Everybody ain't saved now. They need some help. Yes, yes. From the saints. Yes. Because Jesus said, the tear going to always be among you. The tear ain't going nowhere. Help the tear. Don't kill them out. Help them. See, can you get them to understand and obey God? Yes. The, let me tell you how the tear operates. The tear is the one that always causes confusion in the church. Always talking against the pastor. Yes. Always talking against the Holy Mother. Yes. That's the tear in the church. Yes. But what God wants you to do is get saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes. <laughs> My time by the one the Bible, read it, read it, neighbor. Yes, sir. 35th verse. Yeah. Cast not away therefore your confidence. Don't cast away your confidence. Will have great recompense of reward. It got a great recompense of reward. Hold to your confidence. Even Paul said, hold fast to the thing that you have heard from the beginning. A lot of people will say, well, Mr. Luther dead and gone, but God told me to hold fast to what he done taught me. And I'm not letting it go. I'm saying this, you can check your Bible, preacher. On Wednesday, Thursday, me and my wife, we were sitting and listening to one of Bishop old DVD. And they were way back then. Al Bishop Lawson looking so young. Al Bella was reading, he showed sure enough looking young. And the same thing, remember, that I taught Wednesday night, he said something, the exact same thing. And I told my wife, that's confirmation. And that's why I will not move from my teaching for nobody. Thank God. You shouldn't move. Why are you going to move? Yes, you add to your faith. When Elevate preach, I'm listening. I ain't setting up that's like I'm about to go to sleep. Keep yawning. You about to sleep, you're going to miss your blessing. <laughs> but let us help one another. Work with one another. Love one another. If love don't change a person, nothing will. Nothing. But sometimes, y'all listen to me, young people. Sometimes when we're disobedient, God don't do it. Bishop used to call Satan his bulldog. And he turned him loose on us like he did allow him to do Job. So when we don't do right, not just young folks, all of us, sometimes God has to bring, let Satan bring some upon us that we can get recognition and thought praying to him. How many of you woke up this morning and prayed before you got out of bed? And I sure don't see no heave hand. Yes, <laughs> How many ate breakfast without praying? See? So what God do, he turns Satan loose and puts you in a position where you got to pray. That's true. Why would you want him to put you in a position like that? Right. When all you got to do is pray. 
Thank you for letting me rise this morning clothed in my right mind. Yes. Thank you for letting me see a brand new day. Yes. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Yes. When you go to the breakfast table, thank you for this food that you have blessed me to eat. Yes. Change it from my natural to a spiritual use. When you get ready to lay down at night, thank you, Lord, yes. for bringing me to the end of another day. Yes. I thank you for your grace and your mercy. Yes. Can we say yes? Yes. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Yes. Go there. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Wasn't that a wonderful message from the Lord today? We thank God so much. We thank God, too, for this great uh, assembly of the young people doing our youth convention. Let's get a lot of hand. I'm, thank God. I'm reminded of what the scripture said. It said, from a child, that I have known the Holy Scripture, my Lord, which was able to make thee wise unto salvation. And that's what it's all about, these young people coming together to give God honor and praise, and we honor them for what they uh, bring to the church. Not just uh, sometimes we say uh, they the church of the future, but they the church of now. And we thank God for them, and we thank God for that wonderful message, giving us some instruction because they may be young and children and coming up, but we, in God's sight, we still children. And so we have to be instructed in the way of the Lord, and that's what we heard today. And we are so thankful for Ella Robinson, the great, great message. Let's get the Lord another hand for his word. So we, 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 we honor the Lord. We know we're gonna have a baptism. And at this time, I think uh, our assistant superintendent has some words to say. And as he comes forth, he can just carry the service as he see fit. Deacon Cersei, give him a hand. Praise the Lord, everyone. Great job. Lord. At this time, we've asked that every young person that's going to sing in the youth choir today, if they would exit out the door downstairs to the Bishop Lawson's class.